You're sitting at your desk right now. Books are open. Phone is on silent. You promise yourself just one hour of focused work. Ten minutes pass. Then your brain starts talking. Someone might have texted you. You might be missing something important. Before you even realize it, the book is closed and you're scrolling through content that doesn't matter. Here's the truth. You didn't choose to get distracted. Your brain made that choice for you. Today everything changes, you're about to discover how to reprogram your mind for laser focus using cutting-edge neuroscience. By the time we're done, you'll have complete control over your attention. Let's get started. Your brain is sabotaging you, and it's not your fault. The reason is, your brain wasn't designed for the modern world, it wasn't built for studying or focusing on textbooks. Thousands of years ago, your ancestors had one primary job, survival. Their brains evolved to notice everything, every sound in the distance, every shadow moving, every potential threat. When they heard rustling in the bushes, they couldn't ignore it. That rustling could be a predator ready to attack. Their survival depends on constant attention to their surroundings. Now fast forward to today. The predators are gone, the dangers have disappeared, but your brain, it still operates the same way. Every notification that pops up on your phone, your brain treats it exactly like that rustling in the bushes. It screams at you to check it immediately, because it might be important. This is where dopamine enters the story. Most people think dopamine is the happiness chemical. That's not accurate. Dopamine is the craving chemical. It's the chemical that makes you want things. Every single time your phone buzzes, your brain releases a small burst of dopamine. Every like on your social media post, every new message, every endless scroll through your feed. These tiny dopamine hits feel good, so your brain starts craving more and more of them. It becomes addicted to the stimulation. Now here's where the problem gets serious. When you sit down to study, there are no buzzes, no likes, no dopamine rushes, just complete silence. To your dopamine addicted brain, this silence feels uncomfortable, it feels wrong, it even feels painful. That uncomfortable feeling is why you reach for your phone. Within minutes of starting to study, your brain is literally starving for stimulation, and it's forcing you to feed it. But there's incredible news, you can retrain your brain to crave focus, instead of distraction. Scientists discovered something called neuroplasticity. This means your brain is not fixed, it's flexible like clay. It rewires itself based on what you do repeatedly. Every single time you focus for even 10 minutes, you're creating pathways in your brain. Think of these pathways like trails through a dense forest. The first time you walk through, you have to push through thick bushes and branches. It's difficult. But if you walk that same path every single day, something changes, the path becomes clearer, the bushes get pushed aside, eventually you have a smooth, easy trail. Your brain works exactly the same way. Every time you choose focus over distraction, you make the focus pathway stronger and clearer. Every time you give in and grab your phone, you make the distraction pathway wider and more tempting. Most people believe focus is a natural talent. They think some people are born focused and others aren't. That's completely wrong. Focus is a skill. It's a muscle. Just like lifting weights at the gym makes your muscles stronger, practicing focus makes your concentration stronger. So if you've been telling yourself, you're just not a focused person, stop. You simply haven't trained the skill yet. And right now, you're about to learn exactly how to train it. Here's your first technique, the dopamine reset. Set a timer for 60 minutes. During this hour, you enter complete lockdown mode. Put your phone in another room, turn off all notifications, no music with lyrics, no distractions of any kind, just you and your work. Now, I need to warn you, the first 15 minutes are brutal, your brain will panic, it will tell you you're bored, it will beg you to check your phone, it will create fake emergencies in your mind. You must push through this discomfort. Around the 15 minute mark, something extraordinary happens inside your brain, the prefrontal cortex, which is your brain's control center for focus and decision making, finally activates. Once it activates, the urge to check your phone starts fading, the discomfort disappears, you enter the deep work state. This is where real productivity happens, your brain stops fighting against you and starts working with you. A strange sense of calm washes over you. This is your brain adapting to focused work. The second technique is called the focus anchor. 
Choose one specific item. It could be a particular hoodie you own, a scented candle, an instrumental playlist. The critical rule is this. You only use that item when you're studying or working. Never use it for anything else. After a few weeks of this practice, your brain creates a powerful association. Every time you put on that hoodie, or light that candle, or press play on that playlist, your brain instantly recognizes it's time to focus. This is classical conditioning in action. You've probably heard Pavlov's famous experiment with dogs. He rang a bell before feeding his dogs, eventually. Just hearing the bell made the dogs salivate, even without food. You're doing the exact same thing with your brain. After consistent practice, your focus anchor becomes like a switch. The moment you activate it, boom, your brain drops into concentration mode automatically. No willpower required. The third technique uses a psychological trick. Your brain hates beginning tasks, starting feels hard and uncomfortable. But once you actually start, your brain hates stopping even more. So here's the strategy. When you absolutely don't want to study, tell yourself you'll only work for two minutes, just two minutes. That's not scary. That's not overwhelming so you begin. But here's the magic. Once you start reading or writing or solving problems, momentum kicks in, your brain gets into a rhythm. Scientists call this the Zygarnik effect. Your brain has a deep psychological need to complete and finish tasks. It hates leaving things incomplete. So you trick yourself into starting with just two minutes. Then before you realize it, 30 minutes have flown by and you're still working. You've hijacked your brain's natural tendencies and used them to your advantage. Now let's talk about the ultimate mental state, flow state. You've experienced this before, time completely disappears. Everything feels effortless and natural. You look up and realize two hours passed in what felt like 20 minutes. Athletes call this being in the zone. Artists call it pure creative expression. They have mapped out exactly how to trigger this state. You need three specific ingredients. First, you need a crystal clear goal, not something vague like study chemistry. Instead, something specific like completing 30 practice problems or writing 500 words. Second, the challenge level must be perfect, not so easy that you're bored, not so difficult that you're frustrated, right in the sweet spot between the two. Third, you need zero distractions, phone completely away, door closed, total environmental control. When you combine these three ingredients, your brain releases a powerful chemical cocktail, dopamine for motivation, norepinephrine for alertness, and anandamide for creativity. These chemicals working together create peak performance mode. You stop forcing yourself to focus. Focus becomes automatic. The work that used to feel like torture transforms into something that actually feels enjoyable. But here's the deepest truth about all of this. Every single time you choose focus over scrolling, you're not just completing an assignment, you're not just studying for an exam, you're doing something far more powerful. You're rewriting your identity, you're proving to yourself that you are someone who controls their own mind. Day by day, repetition by repetition, you stop seeing yourself as a distracted person, you start seeing yourself as someone with incredible focus and discipline. This identity shift is more powerful than any motivation or willpower. Your identity determines your actions, not your goals, not your desires, your identity. When you truly believe you're a focused person, focused behaviors happen automatically. They become natural. They become who you are. You don't have to fight yourself anymore. Focus becomes your default setting. We live in a world engineered to steal your attention. Every app you use, every website you visit, every notification you receive, they're all designed by teams of psychologists and engineers to capture your focus and never let go. Most people lose this battle every single day. They hand over their attention freely and wonder why they never accomplish their goals. But you're different now. You understand how the game is played. You know the rules. Focus isn't about finding more hours in the day. Focus is about being completely present in the hours you already have. The next time you sit down to work, remember you're not just opening a textbook, you're training your most valuable skill, you're building your greatest weapon. Years from now, when you've achieved everything you dreamed about, you look back and understand, your ability to focus was the difference maker. It was always your secret advantage. Now take what you've learned today and put it into action. Train your mind, control your attention, dominate your world.
subscribe for more content that actually transforms how your brain works. Now go out there and show everyone what a focused mind can accomplish. See you in the next one.